Hello everyone, welcoming you to Shore of Search classes. And today we are looking at the ISI MSQE 2023 PEA paper question number 9 and 10. So consider an economy where output income is demand determined. So we are having a Keynesian economy. In an economy, lambda proportion of the total income is distributed to the workers and 1 minus lambda proportion is distributed to the capitalist. The capitalist save SC fraction of their income and consume the rest. The workers save SW fraction of their income and consume the rest. And also SW is greater than SC. The aggregate demand consists of consumption demand and total investment demand. Investment demand is autonomously given by I bar units. So question number 9 says that Suppose saving propensities of both workers and capitalists increase, then in the new equilibrium, what we expect to happen. So let us take down the important information first. So lambda y is the proportion of income going to workers. And 1 minus lambda times y is the proportion of workers, is the proportion of income going to the capitalists. Okay, so given our Keynesian style economy, the consumption function of the workers will be CW bar plus small CW times lambda y, when the consumption function of the capitalist would be C subscript C C C bar plus. 1 minus lambda times y, where Cw is equals to 1 minus Sw and this is equals to 1 minus Sc. Okay, so at equilibrium, what should happen given a demand determined economy? Y should be equals to C plus i. The total consumption in the economy would be consumption by workers consumption by capitalist and investment is autonomous okay so if we just expand this out so y would be equals to cw bar plus it can be written as 1 minus sw times lambda y plus cc bar plus 1 minus sp 1 minus lambda y plus i bar so if we take all the y terms common over here, so that would be 1 minus lambda into 1 minus sw minus 1 minus lambda into 1 minus sc whole into y. So over here we will be left with only the autonomous parts. So let's say together I represent them as a bar. Okay. So if we simplify the left side, so this will be lambda times SW plus 1 minus lambda times SC times Y is equals to A bar. So the equilibrium income would be A bar divided by lambda SW plus 1 minus lambda SC. Okay. So now the question is that suppose the propensity of both workers and capitalists increase, then in the new equilibrium, what will happen? Okay. So now we have increase in savings propensity of the workers and increase in savings propensity of the capitalists. So first let us find out the partial effects individually. So what will be the effect of del y star del sw? So that will be minus of a bar divided by lambda sw plus 1 minus lambda sc whole square times lambda. And what would be the change in income due to change in savings propensity of the capitalist? The expression would be similar. It would be lambda sw plus 1 minus lambda sc whole square times 1 minus lambda. Therefore, the total change in income would be change in y star due to change in sw into dsw plus 
change in y star due to change in sc into dsc okay so this would be minus a bar divided by the denominator would be the same lambda sw plus 1 minus lambda sc whole square and over here we will have lambda times dsw plus 1 minus lambda times dsc if you look at this expression carefully the denominator is positive lambda dsw everything over here is positive so this entire term is positive a bar is positive slap with a minus so this becomes negative so given that the savings propensities of both the workers and the capitalists will increase the aggregate output will decrease okay and the second thing we have to find out is the effect on aggregate savings as well so what is the aggregate savings if we write out the expression it is the savings by the capitalist plus the savings by workers okay so this would be sc bar plus small sc 1 minus lambda y plus sw bar plus small sw times lambda y okay so we want to find out the effect of chain effect on the aggregate savings due to change in the savings propensities so as we understood from the last part that the change in the savings propensities will affect the aggregate output as well so what would be ds it would be if i take this down it would be 1 minus lambda times sc dy plus y dsc and similarly the first one would be lambda times sw dy plus y dsw okay that is the total change in aggregate savings so if i take all the dy components together it would be 1 minus lambda sc plus lambda sw dy plus lambda times dsw plus 1 minus lambda times dsc whole into w all right so let's replace the value of dy that we have got from here so that is 1 minus lambda sc plus lambda sw minus a bar so this will become whole square over here that's the same component whole divided by lambda sw plus 1 minus lambda sc whole square plus the remaining term lambda dsw plus 1 minus lambda dsc times y so from here this component can go out common this part this is there in both and one can cancel over here so we'll have 1 minus lambda sc plus lambda sw one will go out common so we are left with minus a bar divided by lambda sw plus 1 minus lambda sc plus y and what is the y equilibrium y that we have obtained a bar divided by lambda sw plus 1 minus lambda sc so that means if we replace the value minus a bar by lambda sw plus 1 minus lambda sc and the value of y is also the same so lambda sw plus 1 minus lambda sc 
So both will get cancelled out and ultimately your change in the aggregate savings is equals to zero. So our conclusion is income will fall and aggregate savings will remain unchanged. So if we look at the options, that is basically option number D. Thank you.